Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the world premiere of a new musical play, Dear Yesterday. Starring Gordon McRae and his guest star, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another exciting story with music is brought to you by the American Railroad. The same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sir, our story tonight is called Dear Yesterday, and it begins in the year, well, you tell me what year. As Dorothy Warren told and I give you a few hints. Pack up your troubles in your old kid bag and smile, smile, smile. Pack up Like this. Katie, beautiful Katie, you're the only g -g -g girl that I adore. Who can ever forget? It's a long way to Tipperary. It's a long way to go. It's a long way. Like an echo from the past, they all come back to us, down the long, long trail of the years. There's a long, long trail winding into the land of my dreams, where the nightingales are singing and the horse. In our story, I play a fellow named Mark Anderson. And in 1918, he was just thinking of getting himself born. Dorothy Warrenshold is a young lady named Ellen Martin. On a particular afternoon in the Indian summer of 1918, she was a member of a sewing circle in the city of Hartford, Connecticut. <laughs> I think that just about finishes that pair of socks. What's the name of the doughboy you're sending your socks to, Ellen? The name? Oh, well, no name in particular. Just any soldier who happens to need a pair of socks. You mean you're not corresponding with one of our brave boys in the trenches? Why, all the rest of us girls are. Corresponding? Why, why of course I am. Every day. <laughs> unknown, whoever you are, I'm enclosing this note inside one of the socks to let you know that if perchance you are not corresponding with a young lady, perhaps you would care to write to me. I have no idea what you look like. I'm tall. Oh, I knew you'd be tall. And I'm quite handsome. Oh, I knew you would be. And I, I wear a size 11 and a half socks. Oh, now, isn't that fortunate? These socks are exactly 11 and a half. But, dear Mr. Unknown, you must have some fault. Just a little one.
sense to make you human like the rest of us? I do. I hate to get up in the morning. Oh, but that's not really a fault. All soldiers are like that. Oh, how I hate to get up in the morning. Oh, how I love to remain in bed. For the hardest blow of all is to hear the bugle call. You've got to get up, you've got to get up, you've got to get up this morning. Someday I'm going to murder the bugle. Someday they're going to find him dead. But when you do get up, dear Mr. Unknown, these socks are to keep you warm. I'm not putting a date on this note to you because I don't know how many weeks these socks will take to reach you. And I'd like you to feel they came to you close as yesterday. I'm also enclosing a little poem which explains why I'm writing to you. <laughs> it's simple as second grade arithmetic. Hartford, Connecticut, USA. Now, to follow our story very closely, you'd have to be a pair of socks. Warm, very well-knit socks, with a note from a Miss E.M. tucked neatly into one toe. You see, they arrived at a port for overseas shipment on November 10th. And then the most wonderful thing happened. November 10th became November 11th. November 11th. The Armistice! The Armistice! It's inside! Everyone come back to the former of the For 23 years and 19 days, that pair of socks, with the lovely unread note in one toe, sat in a dark warehouse on Staten Island. Miss Ellen's chestnut brown hair turned into a dove gray, and no doughboy in France ever wrote to her, and one and one were never two. Our story begins again, you might say, in Iceland at a U.S. Army installation. PFC Mark Anderson reporting. You know what the Army's like? Well, let me tell you. This is the Army, Mr. Jones. No private rooms or telephone. You had your breakfast in bed before, but you won't have it there anymore. This is the Army, Mr. Green. Like the barracks nice and clean. You had a housemaid to clean your floor, but she won't help you out anymore. Do what the bugler's command. They're in the army and not in a band. This is the army, Mr. Brown. You and your baby went to town. She had you worried, but this is war. Okay, man, line 
up for your extra heavy winter equipment. Anderson, here, here's a pair of socks for you. Thanks. Huh. Awful old-fashioned. They'll keep your feet warm, so just stop your griping. Well, at least I hope they're my size, Sergeant. I take 11 and a half. Well, let me see. The knitting seems to have solidified in this one. What goes on here? Well, what do you know? It looks like a letter. Hmm. Dear Mr. Unknown, whoever you are, I'm enclosing this note inside one of the socks to let you know that if perchance you are not corresponding with a young lady, perhaps you would care to write me. <laughs> a lady, you're going to get a letter from Iceland. Dear Miss E.M., I want to thank you for the socks and for the beautiful poem, and I want you to know I'd love to have you write me regularly. <gasps> the socks, the poem, after all these years. Oh, dear. dear Miss E.M., I- I've tried to picture you in my mind and try to figure out what the E stands for. Well, I, I guess the name doesn't matter. But I know this. You'll be so nice to come home to. You'd be so nice by the fire. While the breeze on high sang a that in the less than eight years since the end of World War II, America's railroads have spent more than $8 billion to help you live better. Some of the things these billions of dollars have put at your service? Well, the list includes 12 million tons of new steel rail and nearly 300 million new cross ties. It includes new yards and sidings, new roadway and shop machinery, new signals and communications. Then there are nearly 18,000 new units of diesel-electric locomotive power and more than half a million new freight cars. And the point is, everybody benefits from these billions of dollars of railroad money spent to bring you better service. Take the manufacturers who supply the 200,000 different items which railroads buy. Obviously, they and their employees and communities benefit. You and the makers and sellers of everything you buy benefit through freight service, which is more dependable and through passenger service, which is more comfortable and safer, and both provided at a lower cost than would otherwise have been necessary. Yes, the nation as a whole benefits from these railroad purchases, too, by being strengthened both in its economy and in a vital part of its national defense. And given the chance to do so, the railroads will continue their improvement program to the lasting benefit not only of the railroads and railroad workers, but also of the shipper, the traveler, the community, the nation, indeed, of everybody. Now here's 
is act two of the new Lawrence and Lee play with music, Dear Yesterday, starring Gordon McRae as Mark Anderson and Dorothy Warren Scholl as Miss Ellen Martin. What are you doing, the infantry? You march, you march, you march. What are you doing, your pack has got your back as if the starch. Dear Miss E.M., in your last letter you write, what do we do in the army? The, the answer is, you march, you march, you march. <laughs> then we get tired of that, you know, we do for a change. We march. And the marching song of this war is that great old railroad chant. Come on, gang. Hey! I've been working on the railroad all the live long day. I've been working on the railroad just to pass the time away. Don't you hear the whistle blow? Throats as we march. What comes from my heart is something different. Perhaps you have guessed what it is from these letters. A face I haven't seen, a girl, a hope. And that hope's initials are E.M. Yours with growing affection, Mark Anderson. <laughs> P.S. I'm still wearing the socks you made for me. Eleven and a half. There's an old saying that fate always gives you what you wished for yesterday. But I want it to be different for you. I want you to have all your wishes come true today, tomorrow. You ask in one of your letters, will we ever see each other? I know this, I see you every day. Connecticut, USA. Oh, he's coming 
Oh, what'll I do? I've got to find another E.M. Hello, is this Emma Lou McPherson? May I ask if you are Miss or Mrs.? What? Five children? <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. McPherson. <laughs> Hello, is Esmeralda Mulligan there, please? Oh, oh no, no, please don't bother her at the old lady's home. <laughs> Eugenia Miller, please. Oh, it's Eugene. <laughs> Forgive me, Mr. Miller. Oh, oh wait a minute. Oh, excuse me, young lady. Yes? Yeah? I, I couldn't help noticing the initials in your handbag. E.M. Do you mind my asking, what does the E stand for? Essie. For Esther? Yes. Yeah. Oh, there's a park bench, Esther, just over there. Would you take three minutes to listen to a story? And that's what happened, Esther. The socks and the letter and, and the poem arrived a whole generation too late. Now he's coming home to a Miss E.M. Perhaps that could be you. No. No, it can't. It wouldn't be fair. Why not? You see... I was in love with the boy. He was killed in the landing at Normandy Beach. I see. Were you married? We were going to be. As soon as he got home. But now I can never be married. Because he'll never come home. Oh, Essie, don't you know? We spend a whole lifetime losing things. Losing people. Sometimes they go away or they fall out of love. Sometimes they die. What are you supposed to do? Your whole life goes by and you've lost everything. Oh, no. God gives us many things to take the place of the things that we lose. But, Miss Ellen... I've lost something, too, Essie. I've lost my youngness. And somebody's going to be very disappointed because he doesn't know. Help me pretend, Essie. I... Help me, please. I'll... I'll pretend, Miss Ellen... I'll help you welcome him home. I knew you'd be beautiful. Not this beautiful. What a homecoming. I'm glad that you're happy, Mark. Happy? I could sing. By golly, I think I will. You know, tucked into the toe of a sock I once received was a poem. And I've memorized it. Every word. Now I know why. So I could sing it back to you. Happiness is never won. Happiness is true. Loneliness is misery. So please add me to you. Minus goes the loneliness. Math will do. Happiness is one plus one, always equals two. They say that two is company, and three they add a crowd. But one is just a wonder. I want you to meet. Who? A friend. He's been wonderful to me and to us. Like a mother. Like a sister. I'd love to meet her. Ellen! Miss Ellen! Yes, Carl? Miss Ellen, I'd like to have you meet Mark Anderson. I'm very pleased to meet you, young man. How do you do? Uh, don't, don't I know you? Haven't we met before? Perhaps we have. It's very possible. Well, Les has been telling me how wonderful you've been to her, and I want to thank you. Matter of fact, I'd like to kiss you for it. Dear boy, 
Dear Mark, now, now I leave you two. Be happy. Be happy, always. Oh, how wonderful they are together. And how happy that makes me. back in just one moment. And meanwhile, our hearty thanks to Janet Waldo, Isabel Jewell, and to our entire company. Dear Yesterday, with the famous music of two world wars, was an original story by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? Out along railroad right-of-way, one of the most familiar sights is that of men and machines at work maintaining and improving the track over which trains run. And the laying of new steel rail as part of this important job is one good measure of the tremendous improvement program which the railroads have been carrying on since the end of World War II. During this time, for instance, enough new and better rail for some 65,000 miles of average track has been laid, enough to cross the nation from coast to coast more than 20 times. This installation of stronger, safer rail is just another of the many reasons why today's better railroads mean better service for you. Thank you, Marvin. Well, Gordon, what's on the show train next week? Well, Dorothy, one of the loveliest love stories of all time. So much so that we're calling it Love Story. You want a hint? Let's go. Love you, I love you. Let's go. Oh, oh, that's one of my favorites. The love story of Robert Browning. Mm-hmm. And Elizabeth Barrett, all set to some glorious music. See you next Monday night at number 50 Wimpole Street. That's right, and in sunny Italy, too. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Dorothy. You were wonderful. All aboard. Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night, and Love Story, on behalf of the other members of the cast and of the American Railroads, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying good night. Mac Ray can be seen in Warner Brothers' The Desert Song in Technicolor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Oh.